Yet the terrorists hit the only portion of the building that was almost completely empty because it was being renovated. If the terrorists crashed into any other area of the Pentagon, thousands more may have died. Furthermore, one of the purposes of the renovation was to increase the strength of the windows and walls to make them better able to withstand an attack. Intended or not, this was a perfect, full-blown test of 1. a cruise missile-like system, 2. the Pentagon's defensive systems, and 3. the fortification methods being used to strengthen the Pentagon. To summarize, the pilot knew he had to take a tremendous risk by flying only inches above the ground at 400 miles per hour, then did a spectacular 270 degree turn to hit the strongest part of the Pentagon with the fewest number of people in it. One amazing coincidence after another. These terrorists hit the trifecta, then went unbelievably out of their way to squander most of their winnings. The shuttle shattered 40 miles above Texas while traveling perhaps 12,000 miles per hour. Pieces of the shuttle and the astronauts were found over hundreds of square miles. By comparison, the passengers and debris from Flight 77 were confined to a very tiny area. But where are the pieces? There were only seven astronauts, but pieces of their bodies were found. There were 64 people on Flight 77 but there is no sign of their bodies or even their blood. This area is the corridor between rings. There is nothing in this rubble that looks like Flight 77 or pieces of luggage. This hole was supposedly created by Flight 77, but nothing in the rubble would support such a theory. Another photo of building materials and office furniture not pieces of airplane. Inside the offices, the only rubble we find is construction material. There are only a few photos that show scraps that appear to be from an airplane. For example, this is supposedly a piece of the skin of Flight 77. However, this metal is too thin to belong to such a large airplane. Look at a blade of grass to see how small this piece is. Too small to come from a 757. Captain Russ Wittenberg, who flew 757s among other planes, took this photo to an airport to figure out which part of the plane this scrap came from. He couldn't. These planes are 155 feet long and 60 tons when empty. The engines are 9 feet in diameter, and they have heavy steel components. The small figure next to the engines is a six-foot-tall man to show how large these engines are. The landing gear also contains massive metal components. Even if this scrap belongs to Flight 77, where is the rest of the airplane? How can 60 tons of metal disappear? Airplanes do not vaporize. Flight 77 also had several tons of people, freight, and luggage. Where are they? We see intact books, desks, and office furniture. This delicate scrap looks like it belongs to a Global Hawk or similar sized drone or cruise missile, not a Boeing 757. The circular object behind the firefighter is supposedly part of the engine of Flight 77. Only one of these engine objects was found, but Flight 77 had two large engines, not one small engine. Some say it is a part of the 757's auxiliary power unit, but it is not the right size for that either. Is it a coincidence that a Global Hawk type aircraft has just one small engine approximately this size? This piece of landing gear was found inside the Pentagon. Too small for a 757. This tire rim was also found inside. While it is the correct type for a 757, it appears to be too small. In no way does this debris prove that Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon. A Global Hawk or drone also has tires and landing gear. Here's another thin piece of metal that would fit better on a Global Hawk or a smaller aircraft than a 757. Furthermore, a 757 would leave in excess of 60 tons of scrap, as opposed to merely a few small pieces. 
These tiny scraps of aircraft would make sense if a smaller aircraft like a Global Hawk crashed into the Pentagon because the Global Hawk was designed to be extremely lightweight. One reason for its low weight is to reduce the power requirements of the engine, which in turn reduces the noise and heat from the engine. This makes it difficult for people to hear it or pick it up on radar or with infrared sensors. A Global Hawk is like a carbon fiber eggshell with an engine. Christopher Bolin of the American Free Press spoke with Steve Riskus, who saw the plane hit the Pentagon and took these photos of the fire before the firefighters arrived. Steve said the plane flew by his windshield, but he did not hear much noise. This is evidence that a Global Hawk or similar quiet aircraft hit the Pentagon. By comparison, the first plane to crash into the World Trade Center was recorded on video because a cameraman heard the incoming plane before it reached the North Tower. The microphone of his video recorder also picked up the screaming sound of its engines. However, that plane never came closer to him than about a thousand feet, whereas the craft that hit the Pentagon flew only inches above the cars. A video available at Blockbuster shows the first airplane hitting the North Tower. The video is called 9-11, the filmmaker's commemorative edition. Here is a sample of it. That airplane never came closer to the ground than about a thousand feet, but we can clearly hear it. If a Boeing 757 flew 400 miles per hour only inches above the cars, the noise would have been deafening. People would have also felt the turbulence from the wings and the vibrations and hot exhaust from the engines. In some respects, this photo resembles those from other disasters. Specifically, most of the people are dressed to deal with fire or they have gloves and work boots. There are no secretaries in business attire, nor are there any children. However, a few photos show executives wandering around among the firefighters. Who are these two guys? Why are they collecting material from the crime scene? They do not have gloves on, nor work boots. They are holding the parts away from their bodies. Are they worried about getting their clothes dirty? Why are they walking around in the firefighting foam, water, human body parts, and sharp scraps of metal? Why are they so eager to help clear up the crime scene that they rushed out amongst the firefighters to help pick up a few scraps? Are these the FBI investigators? If so, why didn't they let the workers with gloves and boots collect the debris? A Boeing 757 would leave some 60 tons of material, in which case these two guys would not be able to contribute anything significant to the cleanup. However, if a Global Hawk crashed into the Pentagon, there would be only four tons of parts or less to clear up. Furthermore, since more than 50 percent of a Global Hawk is carbon fiber and resin rather than aluminum, if most of the non-metallic material burned, there would be less than two tons of scrap. This would explain the mystery of why so little remains. An unmanned Global Hawk has aluminum in the fuselage and wings. Any large pieces of aluminum would have to be hidden because they would not look like pieces of a Boeing 757. Is it not odd that some guys carried away a large box hidden behind a tarp? Why would these people carry away this secret item? What is inside this box, and where did they take it? Why the secrecy if the military has nothing to hide? As if there were not already a number of strange aspects regarding the debris, a news helicopter shows a line of people picking up small items from the grass. Who are these people? They are neither firefighters nor police officers. Why are they prematurely removing evidence from a crime scene? This very rapid cleanup also happened at the World Trade Center and the crash site of Flight 93. The cleanup crews were on site immediately, removing evidence before it could be examined by investigators. At the Pentagon, those involved in clearing up the crash site were top executives. This is like the board of directors at a Fortune 500 company turning out to help the janitors clean up the toilets on the shop floor. If a global hawk crashed into the Pentagon, 
the pieces of carbon fiber would have to be picked up quickly because if somebody had found a piece of it, he would have announced, hey, this is no American Airlines flight. We just got hit by some high-tech aircraft, and the Bin Laden scenario would have become a non-starter. Could it be the reason Flight 77 vanished from radar near Ohio was because it landed at a military base in the area, and then another plane, such as a Global Hawk, may have been sent up to replace it? In 1962, based on information provided under the Freedom of Information Act, a military operation called Operation Northwoods planned to take a civilian aircraft, replace it with a drone, shoot it down, and then blame the incident on the Cubans in order to spur the American people to go to war. Sound familiar? Since a Global Hawk can fly above 60,000 feet, it could fly from Ohio to the Pentagon above commercial airplanes flight paths. Since it is small and more than 50% carbon fiber, it is not as noticeable on radar as commercial airplanes, especially when flying at 60,000 feet. This would explain why the air traffic controllers never noticed it on their radar as it traveled to the Pentagon. Or maybe it took off from another field close by? A Global Hawk also flies at 400 miles per hour, which is the speed the military claims Flight 77 was flying when it allegedly hit the Pentagon. Seismic sensors are buried around the world for measuring earthquakes and other events. These devices are so sensitive that many of them picked up the impact vibrations of the airplanes as they crashed into the World Trade Center and the crash in Pennsylvania. They also picked up the collapse of the towers and the collapse of Building 7. What was so different about the Pentagon crash that seismic sensors did not record vibrations from an airplane crashing into the Pentagon? Scientists who analyzed the data reported, Despite detailed analysis of the data, we could not find a clear seismic signal. A seismic station near the Pentagon does not show any clear sign of an airplane crash. A different station shows a blip that might be an airplane crash at 939, and a third station shows absolutely nothing. The blip in the middle graph, which is colored red to make it more visible, appears to be a possible airplane crash. But the scientists who analyzed the data claimed that it occurred at too high a frequency. If it was not an airplane crash, what was it? Another ongoing operation? Six Global Hawks were built as of December 2002. If one of them crashed into the Pentagon, there should be one less in the inventory. Reporter Christopher Bolin spoke with the Air Force in December 2002, and they admitted that two Global Hawks were lost in ongoing operations. Not surprisingly, the Air Force refused to explain what those ongoing operations meant. As previously mentioned, Flight 77 vanished from air traffic controllers' radar screens near Ohio. Nearly an hour later, it was noticed on radar near Washington, D.C. It was dropping from a high altitude. CBS News describes it as a downward spiral, turning almost a complete circle. How do we explain the sudden appearance on radar of Flight 77? Could it have been one of those missing Global Hawks or a similar drone aircraft and not Flight 77? If a Global Hawk flew from Ohio to the Pentagon above 60,000 feet, it would not be easy to see on radar until it descended to below 10,000 feet. Flight 77 allegedly dropped a treetop level and headed toward the Pentagon. But where are the witnesses who heard the tremendous roar of its jet engines? The lack of noise suggests that this was not Flight 77 at all, but instead one of those missing Global Hawks, which are very quiet. As the Global Hawk crossed into Pentagon property, a missile may have been fired at it. Does the Pentagon have missiles in its security system? The missile would have shattered the Global Hawk and incinerated its carbon fiber. But just in case small pieces survived, people would have to check for scraps. The fuselage of a drone has an aluminum frame, so if a large piece of it survived, 